This video is sponsored by NordPass. SpaceX, Starship Updates and Crew Dragon Demo Mission 2 is no demo. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And today's episode is the last one before I do my trip to the United States to hopefully check out some starships in Boca Chica, see some rocket launches and meet up with you in Florida and Texas. And due to me not being around, there most likely won't be a regular episode until March 16th. I know that's a long time, but I will try to keep you updated with a lot of live streaming and recording for later episodes. So check out the channel regularly for some live stream announcements and community posts and stay strong, I'll be back. And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates As seen on the last episode, SpaceX right now is getting the Starship prototype ready for my visit as requested. Work is going on 24-7 to polish it as much as possible before I inspect the work. And SpaceX right now is focused on getting the needed plumbing and systems integration done on the finished tank section. Multiple crews are working on the outside and the inside and it all very much reminds me of what we saw with Mark 1. Cherry picker cranes on the outside and lots and lots of cables going in through some cutouts signaling lots of activity on the inside as well. SpaceX this time decided against the famous manholes from the Mark 1 build and found another way of getting the workers in and out rabbit holes. They are lowering them down sitting inside special cages through the top dome with one of the large cranes. A much better solution than cutting holes into the hull that are not needed after the construction on the inside is finished. As you can see here, SpaceX has been very busy connecting the already installed systems and adding more to the outside of the hull. Amongst pressure regulators, also sensors can be found on the outside now and more and more composite pressure vessels or COPVs can be found installed on the Starship prototype as well. Amongst the more recent additions for example is this large COPV. This size could not be found on Mark 1's hull. One of the possible reasons for these large tanks could be that SpaceX has changed the amount of RCS thrusters to be installed on serial number 1. It also seems that the pressure regulators are connected to a pipe coming from the inside of the hull and also to the large COPV. Also the small COPVs are connected to them. So these definitely are now confirmed as pressure regulators. Sensor cables can be seen connected to them as well by now, so they will most likely have a direct link to the avionics of Starship Serial No. 1. All this shows again and again how quick SpaceX is progressing with the project. And the large COPV mounted to the hull is not the only one spotted on site. SpaceX is mounting others onto brackets close by. Where they want to put these is not clear yet, but the inside of the tank section can be ruled out. These would simply be too large to fit through any available access hole right now. Maybe inside the thrust section would be a viable place. The outside of the hull seems like an unlikely place as the frames seem to be straight and not curved. Starship Serial No. 1 does seem to need a lot more COPVs than Mark 1 did. In this picture by Mary we can see the lines going down from the pressure regulators. Do you see the 7 small pressure lines here? If we follow them from down there all the way to the COPVs, you can see that some of the lines are connected directly to the pressure regulators and some lead inside the hull. I would love to get some pictures from inside. Elon, if you have the time and it's not too secret, show us what's going on here. We'd love to get some more details, well, as always. Also very visible in this picture are the cut out parts on the bottom ring segment. All around the hull there are 6 of them and they look similarly placed as to where the leg mounts on Mark 1 were. So these might be the spots where we should rather soon now see some legs installed. First raceways, as we saw them on Mark 1, are also being installed on Starship Serial No. 1. These most likely are for autogenous pressurization again and there will be more coming soon. Mark 1 had many of these pipes running along the hull. Here you can see one of the workers drilling yet another access hole for pipes into the thrust section's outer hull. A lot of these holes will be needed in the coming days. Some of the hardware is sticking out so much though that it makes me wonder if there will be any aerodynamic cover over them in the end. This would produce quite the drag and would definitely be less than optimal for sure. On later versions most of it will most likely be shifted to the inside of the hull. But what will SpaceX do about it for serial number 1? Will they just let it sit there like this? 
Overall progress is still lightning fast and SpaceX is pulling four shifts around the clock to keep the progress at this high level. If any of the workers are watching this, tell your colleagues that we all very much appreciate the dedication with which you and your team are working on these prototypes at day, at night, in the rain and in the storm. Thank you, you rock! A new container protected area is being prepared right now most likely for concrete pouring work. If SpaceX wants to construct these two prototypes at the same time, more workspace is constantly needed. This might be a third large onion tent we are seeing in the early stages. How many more will SpaceX build? SpaceX has also been busy finishing the construction on the high bay, formerly known as Vertical Assembly Building or Windbreaker 2. The roof construction is almost done now and workers have lifted a large metal beam on top of it. It will be interesting to see what this is for. I'll keep you updated. And one more picture from Jean from South Padre. Here you can see through the door of the tent where the nose cone is being made and it seems like SpaceX is making very good progress here too. This looks like at least two parts have already been stacked, maybe even three and including the top cap. So let's put that picture to good use right away. For all those who have not seen this yet, this is where we keep track of the Starship build progress to visualize what's already done by now. This again is where we left off on the last episode. It's only missing four rings, but a lot of the nose segments were still separate parts. This has already been changed now as we saw, so at least the three top segments can be changed from separate segments into one solid piece of shiny Starship hull. And on Tuesday then, SpaceX moved the tank section to the launch site as predicted. Everything went smooth as usual and as always it was an impressive sight to see SpaceX move more test articles down the road to the shoreline. These tank sections are large and it especially becomes apparent when you see them on the road. As soon as it reached the launch site, SpaceX workers lifted it up onto the launch mount and connected it. Then work continued on the tank section. Meanwhile, Elon Musk was active on Twitter again and told us that the serial number one tank is right now preparing for Raptor attachment and static fire. So this one will not just undergo pressure testing. It will at least have an engine test performed. He also said that the serial number two tank will start integration this week with even higher quality. This is good news as the serial number one tank still looks far from perfect. He also confirmed what I expected for a while now. SpaceX played around with weld settings and due to that in at least some parts of the hull they used the wrong ones. They found the right settings now though and are also working on a planisher to make the welds even more flat. He also gave a very good clue to the question if we will see serial number one fly. The answer is most likely no. When asked if there were still three Raptors planned, he replied with three on serial number two. This indicates that serial number one will have less raptors. One raptor though most likely won't be enough safety margin to lift a fully assembled Starship prototype up. So my guess is that serial number one will only undergo further pressure testing and a static fire with probably one raptor. Last but not least, here are the latest closure dates as of today. The upcoming dates for February 29th to March 2nd are all set up in the night. All of them are long enough for pressure or static fire tests. So as soon as we see a Raptor arrive at the launch site, we'll know if these dates will only be a pressure test or if we might see a static fire instead. So this is it, my last update here on YouTube before my trip. And the next time I'm uploading a regular episode, it might well be that we're looking at an almost finished prototype. SpaceX, you rock! I will of course make sure to stream out of Boca Chica if at all possible and I will upload tons and tons of pictures to my Twitter, so this might be the right moment to follow me there to get updates about Kennedy Space Center, Boca Chica, rocket launches and of course my two meetups at Kennedy Space Center and South Padre Island. Crew Dragon Demo Mission 2 is no demo. This one's probably a very small news update, but I think it's still worth it. Demo Mission 2 might not be a fitting name anymore. This is the name with which SpaceX and NASA are referring to the upcoming launch of a Crew Dragon with Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley on board. It most likely will be before Boeing can launch anything towards the ISS again and it will be the first crewed launch from American soil since 2011. And all of the hardware will come from SpaceX. Now, initially this mission was planned as a demo flight. Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley were planned to just go up, dock, have a brief visit of up to two weeks 
and then head back down to the planet again. A demonstration that the system can perform and that Crew Dragon is a reliable option for transfer flights. On February 22nd, though, the Johnson Space Center showed some pictures of Bob Binken and Doug Hurley training for the mission. Anyone who knows a thing or two about ISS missions can see that this obviously is an EVA training they're going through right now. An extravehicular activity, though, would never be planned for a max two weeks duration mission, unless Dragon needs some good window cleaning, of course. An EVA is a long-term planned mission normally and not something that's performed in such a short mission window. The solution to all of this obviously is that Doug and Bob will stay longer and most likely Crew Dragon will too. The reason for this can be found in NASA's problems to staff the ISS. Soyuz right now is the only option and Russia has been raising the price per seed more and more lately because they know that soon America won't need to buy them anymore. So why not use this first flight to ease the problem of having to get personnel up to the station? Once they are docked, they will most likely stay much longer than what was initially planned. Hopefully soon we'll get a new mission outline from NASA and SpaceX and with it some official information on what's exactly changed for the two astronauts. So Crew Dragon will right from the beginning be used for a full duration mission. Even more exciting for us and a hell of a challenge for SpaceX. The capsule will have to prove right on the first mission that it can do more than a simple demo run. I'm pretty confident though that Crew Dragon can deliver. It's an easy solution for a complex problem and that's what you want when it comes to important issues. And today's sponsor is specialized in a similar approach. And everyone knows this problem. You go to a website, want to log in and your info is not correct. So you go through a rather complicated recovery process. Sometimes even involving a second authentication method like your phone to make sure it's really you trying to reset the password. NordPass gets rid of all of this. Their service offers you one single password. That's all you have to remember for all your different services and websites. It is synced on all your devices, autofills in the passwords and it comes with a state-of-the-art password generator. It encrypts your passwords, you can share them and NordPass has a zero-knowledge architecture. They don't know your passwords either. Get rid of one of the most annoying problems on the internet with NordPass. Never do a password recovery again and at the same time support what about it and NordPass has even upped the deal too. Get a one-year subscription for 40% less and three months on top for free at nordpass.com slash whataboutit or use the code whataboutit. And it's only $2.99 per month and they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So make it simple with NordPath. Links in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It. Will SpaceX finish their build before I get there on March 6th? And is it a good idea to use Crew Dragon right away for full-fledged missions? As always, tell me in the comments. Welcome to the patron shoutout of episode 76. This is where I thank those who go above and beyond to support me in my efforts to bring you the latest and greatest about space and science. These people research for me, they chat with me on the Discord and they give vital funding very much needed for the continued operation of the channel. They're a very nice bunch of people and that's why they get a thank you on each episode. And as always there are new members on the team. Everyone please give a warm welcome to Jerry Gerards, Lucky Green, Martin Skov Christensen, Dan Babbage, Karol Szczesinski, Guillermo Jimenez and many others. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It and now would be the appropriate time to hit the like button, subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button to actually receive a notification when I do my uploads. It's a version of support that doesn't cost a penny and it does help me to produce more and better content. And if you do want to spend your money, consider becoming a patron and get insights into the production of What About It and chat with me on the Discord. Or you could buy yourself a new shirt on our merchandise store and look like me. There are plenty original designs available in good quality for a low price made by a space nerd for other space nerds. It all helps me to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. Starship updates. Yeah. Prototype. I still believe though that... I still believe... Anna Kennedy. So have that. Czeszynski. 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 Grrr. <laughs> <laughs>